This meeting is being recorded. Okay, so welcome everyone to the first uh, seminar of the Center for Research on Language Diversity seminar series for 2022. I'm Professor James Walker. I'm the current director of the center. Um, and we've got a bunch of seminars already lined up, um, including this week and next week, and then a few weeks later. But uh, the first seminar for this year will be introduced by Professor Maria Tabane. Oh, okay. Well, okay. <laughs> very, it's all very formal now. All right. Um, so, well, I, I, I'd like to welcome back David Dedeting. For, um, this is the second seminar he's giving for us. Um, uh, so when was the last one, David? You're muted still. David, hello? Oh. Um, am I the only one that's seeing the problem? Your microphone is disabled when sharing computer audio? David, we can't hear you. Sorry. James, you might want to stop the recording while we sort this out. But uh, it would have been over a year ago. Yeah, well over a year, I would have thought. But yeah, well yeah. over a year ago now. So it's, uh, um, yeah, so it's a, a year and something ago. So that was on uh, Brunei English, but now we're doing on Malay. So it's a different. Right, yeah. right, right. Okay. Um, well, I, all I was really just going to say is that um, you, you, unfortunately, you came to Melbourne um, after the pandemic started. So we, yeah. <laughs> we haven't actually um, seen you much in person. So, um, uh, and all I was just gonna, I was just going to quickly remind people that um, you until very recently you were in um, Brunei and before that you were in Singapore and before that um, also in um, the UK and a little bit of time way before then in Taiwan. So um, and so that was really I just just I was really just going to say um, on you know member of the editorial board for our journal of second language pronunciation and journal of english as a lingua franca tesol quarterly um english worldwide asian journal of english language and teaching so that gives you a fair idea um, of the kind of research that david does and um and his, his thesis back in 1990 at cambridge was um speaker normalization in automatic speech recognition that's coming out of a background in sort of you know maths physics -y, chinese linguistics type studies at Durham and at Cambridge. So um, sorry that all ended up a bit convoluted thanks to technical problems, but um, we're very pleased that you can tell us about what I think is gonna be a very broad ranging talk on um, Malay English phonetics. So um, I'll just hand over to you and, and we'll sort out the problems with audio uh, if and as they arise. <laughs> okay, okay. if you can hear me, then that's the main thing. If we, if we can't play the sounds and I'll simulate them, but uh, we'll, we'll manage, okay. Um, Right, now, uh, if I share screen, and then we do uh, share there, and then, and you can see that now. Can you confirm you can see that? I can see that, David. You Maybe you want to click on hide on that bar. Oh, yes, it's hide, indeed. It's, right, got that. So you can see that and you can hear me, is that correct? Correct. Okay, good, right. Um, so the phonetics of Malay, I will be talking about the phonetics of Malay, which is some recent work I did in uh, Brunei before uh, I left one and a half years ago to come to Melbourne. Um, this is part of a series uh, of Cambridge Elements in Phonetics, which is a new um, initiative launched by Cambridge. Um, that's the, what the homepage looks like. Um, and uh, these Cambridge Elements in Phonetics has um, is supposed to have a um, an online version, a PDF version, um, so, and there's some intermediate between um, papers and books. So it's quite substantial work without being a full book. Okay, this is the first um, element in this series. It's called the Phonetics of Malay. It's uh, uh, by myself and two colleagues, um, both in Brunei, 
Ishamina Aitira, Gardner, and Najib Norashid. So I'll be presenting an overview of that now. Um, I guess I won't be able to play the sounds, but never mind. We'll um, I'll give you a substantial, I hope, a reasonable overview of the work. Um, the work has six chapters. Um, uh, introduction, existing research, varieties of Malayan materials of, for, for research, acoustic analysis, and future research. The idea is to give an overview of existing work in Malay, or in the phonetics of Malay, pronunciation of Malay, um, and also to um, pr present some new material in the um, acoustic analysis, and then consider where we're going from there. Okay, so I'll start with the section two, uh, existing research. I won't go into all of it. I'll just give you a flavor of some of the uh, areas. Consonants, vowel, syllable structure, stress, rhythm, and intonation. The consonants of Malay look like that. Um, I think there are 19, uh, 19 consonants in the um, basic uh, uh, inventory with some marginal ones. So I've put the marginal ones in uh, brackets. They, this, it's uncertain whether they should be regarded as phonemes of Malay or not. Um, particular fricatives and the glottal stop. So the fricatives, there are five fricatives that um, occur, but only in borrowed words uh, from Arabic or English. Um, so there's quite a lot of those, but they don't occur in the native lexis. Um, and the only fricative that occurs in the native lexis is S. Um, oh, H as well. I should have put H. Sorry, that's incorrect. So both S and H um, are in the native lexis. Um, it, it, glottal stop. Now, the, the status of the glottal stop is uncertain. It's uh, it might be regarded as a phoneme or uh, sound in um, Malay, but actually it occurs in four different situations. It can start at the beginning of a word like angin. If you can hear at the beginning, angin means wind, uh, and it can start with a glottal stop sometimes. It can occur at the end of a word like bike, but uh, I'm uh, putting a K on that, but if I say bike, bike, with a glottal stop at the end. That's uh, the usual realization of word final K. It can also occur in words like sa'at, sa uh, which is second. And it can occur, uh, this is a borrowed word, sa'at from Arabic. And it can occur in the middle of a word like the anga, which is, uh, is separating a prefix from the root. So there's four situations a glottal stop it can occur, which suggests it's predictable. Um, or its context is predictable when, so therefore maybe it's not really a phoneme. It's, uh, an, um, it's a, a predictable realization of various sounds. Okay, vowels. Uh, there are, there are uh, six vowels in Malay. Uh, they look like that uh, using the vowel quadrilateral. Uh, we'll go through the, uh, into the um, realization of those vowels later when I look at the um, acoustic analysis. Do diphthongs occur? Some people talk about diphthongs, I, ow, and oi. But, but notice that they can only occur at the end of words like trukai, which is tax, pulau, which is island, and amboy, expression of wonderment. They can only occur at the end of words like that. Um, if you remember, I started, had a word like bike. bike. Um, actually, most people regard that as two syllables. So the i there is not. A, a diphthong. It's actually the vowel in two different syllables, although it can be pronounced as um, a diphthong. So it, you'd say that the underlying um, representation, I, R, and oi, can only occur at the end of a word. If that's the case and you can't have a, 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 any consonant following it, you can regard it I as um, ending in a y and R as ending in a w. So um, the basic conclusion is that there are no diphthongs in Malay. There are no phonemic diphthongs. Phonetically, there were diphthongs, but there were no phone phonemic diphthongs. There were just five vowels, six vowels, by six vowels, and um, some of the vowels are followed by y or w, so they are realized as diphthongs in uh, phonetic phonetically. Okay, that's a, a, just a very brief. Um, uh, overview of some issues in uh, that have been studied before. Um, if we look at, at um, 
uh, varieties of Malay. Of course, Malay is not a, a single language. There are many different varieties. There are dialects and there's different uh, varieties of standard Malay. Um, Malay is spoken mainly throughout um, Malay Peninsula in uh, Indonesia and in Brunei and also Singapore. Um, there are some differences between standard Malay in Malaysia, Bahasa Malaya, and uh, in Indonesia, Bahasa Indonesia. The main differences are actually with the uh, R or um, the fi word final vowel uh, spelt with an A or the word final R. In Malaya, Malaysia, most people say sayur, meaning I. But in some places in Malaysia and in Indonesia, they say saya. Um, and all words like that. Um, uh, so, uh, uh, you can uh, mula to begin or mula. Uh, and similarly, R, the final R, basar uh, has an R or basar has no R. Um, so so uh, how, whether it's R or U, uh, and whether R, uh, the, the, the rotic, the R sound can occur at the end of a word. Those are the differences, main differences. Dialects of Malay, there are quite substantial differences. I've just listed three there. There are many, many other dialects of Malay. Um, I've listed those three because we described them in a little bit of detail because there were quite substantial um, of uh, analysis, acoustic analysis of these varieties. So um, it, it, we have some material to refer to. Uh, uh, please notice that Brunei Malay is listed there. Brunei Malay is very different from standard Malay spoken in Malay, in, Br in Brunei, sorry. Standard Malay spoken in uh, Brunei is different from the dialect Brunei Malay. And the data that uh, is used in this is actually uh, standard Malay recorded in Brunei. Um, the, uh, we use two different sources of material, the North Wind and the Sun Passage and uh, a map task. So the North uh, is data from Brunei. Uh, in Brunei, standard Malay in Brunei tends to have saya rather than sayu. So uh, have R at the end and would have a very strong R sound, so bizarre, even uh, tapped or even trilled. Okay, this is the um, this is the uh, passage. This is the North Wind and the Sun passage uh, translated into Malay. Uh, it's not a direct translation because we have uh, deliberately included some words with uh, the un the uh, rarer vowels O and A. Uh, so it's a little unusual in some places, but it's a basic North Wind and the Sun passage with a little bit added. Okay, and the map task looks like that. It's a fairly standard map task, but we've used um, we've used landmarks that are um, familiar to people in uh, in Brunei and in Malaysia and suitable things. So um, uh, there's a um, there's a mango tree at the bottom on the left. There's a waterfall. There's a long house in the one on the right. The one on the left doesn't have a long house. So some of the landmarks are different. There's a forest, Hutan, on, on the right. There isn't one on the left. So these are designed to be fairly familiar landmarks for people. And we recorded um, um, four people, two, two different conversations. So uh, the, the map task has... Um, the two maps, the one on the left has a route, the one on the right does not. The participants can't see each other's map. The leader has to guide the other person, the, the follower, to uh, along the route. And some of the um, landmarks are different, OK? Um, so um, we, we, I'll just go very briefly through an acoustic analysis. I'll have to simulate this because I, uh, um, I'm not able to play the sounds. Um, the uh, you, you, actually, I probably can do it this way. It'll be uh, won't be very good quality, but you might just hear this. Let, let me try this. Uh, try this out now. I'm going to try to this. You will be hear the sound, but not very well. Um, okay. 
Now, you should be able to hear that. Not very well, but it will play. Now, uh, this is to, uh, uh, the uh, aspiration. And um, the aspiration on the uh, K, the, there is aspiration, some aspiration on the K, and there's almost no aspiration on the P. So that's quite standard. The, the, K, the K sound, the, the V sound has some aspiration, the P and uh, the T, a T, not shown there, but a T does not have any. So that's what aspiration David, looks David, Yeah. I just Can thought you, I'd say we had no trouble hearing that. So yeah, okay. okay. If you wanted to play some audio that way, yeah, I okay. think it would work. That seems to work well. I'm just playing it through the, it, it's not direct, but it's actually, it's quite loud and I'm playing it through the speaker. So that seems yeah. to work. That, that's, that's much better. Yeah, um, that's working well. And then maybe later you can play that whole passage that you weren't able to play the North Wind and the Sun. Oh, yeah. Let me go, I'm not going to play the whole passage. Let me just illustrate it. So North Wind and the Sun sounds like this. Ketika angin utara dan matahari sedang bertengkar. Okay, so that you can hear that, right? And now uh, um, this is the mat task. Anda sekarang berada di mana? That's the females, and this is the women, the males. Baik, uh, kita akan mulakan dengan uh, bermula dari titik mula dahulu. Uh, okay, so uh, you, you just hear the the leader in each case. Um, starting off at the beginning. I'm not going to play the whole thing because it's quite long. But if you can hear these, so so we go back to aspiration. We've done. Um, now you can you can. It's hard to hear, I guess, but you can probably see and maybe hear that. K k and kapanasan has some aspiration, whereas the p has almost none. So kapanasan almost like a b sound. Um, okay. Um, and those are the measurements which confirm that the K is um, has some aspiration, not a lot, but some. Uh, the P and the T almost never have any aspiration. Okay, so that's aspiration. Now we move on to um, the R sound, the rhotic. Um, the rhotic is uh, sometimes emitted, not very often, uh, before, before another consonant can be emitted. It tends to be a tap, particularly in intervocalic position. It can be a trill and sometimes an approximate. So let's illustrate those. I've actually got all four of these. This is um, the one male speaker saying, um, leaning against a bushy tree. So, um, Bersandar di sebatang pokok berendang. Can you hear the trill and the rendang? Bersandar di sebatang pokok berendang. Bersandar di sebatang pokok berendang. Okay. Uh, you might also notice that the person now, I, um, whether the, there is an R in Basanda or not, whether it's omitted or approximate, it's hard to tell, but it's certainly not trilled. Um, that is a trill for the rendang. Basanda di sebatang pokok rendang. You can, you can see Bersandar it. Basanda di sebatang pokok rendang. And you can probably hear it. Okay, now intervocalically, Utara, which means uh, um, uh, north. So this is uh, angin utara. It's the north wind. Angin utara yeah. Angin utara Angin utara It's actually hard to tell that, but if you, you can see it quite uh, easily like that, you can see that it's a tap, even if it's it's actually quite difficult to determine. And quite consistently, intervocalically, an R is um, a tap. But I think uh, for tapaxa, there is no R in it. That means um, had to or must. Um, notice before a consonant. So tapaxa is, uh, it's a prefix uh, before con uh, uh, a consonant. So um, the R does not occur there, it's omitted. Angin utara terpaksa, angin utara terpaksa. I think quite clearly tapaxa has no R. Angin utara terpaksa mengakui. Okay. Um, right, that, uh, that's a, a consonant, a vowel quality. This is a measurement of vowels. Now, um, I, I, I said that the, the text, we deliberately changed north wind to the sun, uh, sun passage, so that there will be tokens of A and O, because they're quite rare vowels in Malay, but now we have enough to measure them. Uh, quite, uh, the vowels are reasonably well separated. The schwa, the middle one, which I had to show with an S because I couldn't get the, um, the proper symbol onto the uh, plot. Um, the, uh, the schwa in the middle, the er sound has quite a lot of variation, as you might expect. Um, 
uh, because it's a, a short one. The U also has quite a lot of variation, but the A and O are quite distinct. Okay, so that's vowel quality. You, you can also say that um, some vowels, um, the E and U, uh, have uh, an allophone, have a variant in uh, fine uh, non final position. So if you take the word like elect, uh, which is room, uh, the first one it would be e, and the second vowel in that word would be e. So be lit. Can you, you can hear, as I said, um, uh, uh, and similarly for u can be u, u, subu, subu, um, that means um, that or th this. Um, so there was some variation in the realization of vowels. So you could see those allophones. Okay, rhythm. Um, I'm not going to go through the. Um, the, the uh, uh, formula for measuring rhythm. Uh, th this is a formula that's been devised just for comparing the duration of consecutive vowels. Um, it, it's reasonably um, useful in um, showing rhythm. And uh, you really, for rhythm, you really have to compare with something, otherwise it, the numbers don't mean too much. So um, here we, we're comparing with uh, British speakers. Uh, British speakers um, recording North Wind and the Sun Passage against the um, uh, four speakers here. Um, these four speakers here have uh, a, a rhythm which is, uh, the, the numbers come out about 38, 39, and the British English comes out as 59. The, the higher the number for the, from this formula, the more stress timed the variety is. So the higher value for British English suggests that British English has greater variation in vowel duration, so it is stress timed. The smaller numbers for Malay suggest that it has less variation in vowel duration, so it is more syllable timed. Um, there are some problems in the measurement of rhythm, but it's basically probably that's reasonably accurate. Um, that's one thing that really needs to be uh, investigated further is how to measure rhythm, rhythm for Malay and um, uh, um, whether there are better ways to do it and how um, syllable time Malay really is. Okay, we'll move just to intonation. Um, I'm not going to do all issues of uh, supra-segmental uh, um, sounds, but intonation we'll look at very briefly. Intonation has not been studied very widely for Malay, so I'll just give you a few examples. Falling pitch tends to fall, uh, occurs on final phrases. Rising pitch occurs on non-final phrases. Questions tend to have rising tones, um, and the anchor point, some people will call it the stressed syllable, but the anchor point for a tone is usually in the penultimate syllable of the final words. So let's see about that. This is uh, the traveler took off his coat from cloak from the North Wind and the Sun passage. Uh, the anchor point where it really moves is uh, his cloak. And notice that the highest pitch on bah, which is a penultimate syllable. Pengembara tersebut menanggalkan jubahnya. Jubahnya, right? So uh, quite clearly has a falling tone. It's a final um, phrase and the um, major pitch movement is on bah. For rising pitch, um, we, we, uh, there were no questions in the um, text in the red passage, so we have to look at the um, map task. And this is, um, this is a WH question, where are you now? Uh, and it's I'm just going to Now, whether the, I mean, the most, most of the pitch movement is on the final syllable, but it may, maybe you could say it begins on the ma, di mana, where, di mana. Um, so perhaps you could say that's the anchor point. This is something that really needs to be investigated further. And uh, I've listed that as one of the things that we uh, should focus on. There are many, many areas that would benefit from further research. Um, the ex ex occurrence of the variance of the rhotic sound, uh, when, when do they occur, who uses them, what does it mean, 
there's a huge amount of um, uh, um, research to be done there. In Malay, does stress exist? I haven't talked about stress. Um, the conclusion usually is stress does not exist in Malay, but many people think it does. So that really needs to be investigated further. Uh, and uh, we should, we need to first of all define what stress means, but uh, most people would say nowadays stress does not exist in Malay. I've discussed rhythm very briefly. Is, syllable, is Malay really syllable timed? Maybe it's more syllable timed than British English. Maybe that's just because it has a si simpler syllable structure with consonant, vowel, consonant. Maybe that lends itself to um, a perception of syllable timing. How do you measure rhythm? Is, it, is the um, PVI the best way of measuring it or not? That's something that should be investigated more. And really the biggest area that is um, is open to be re uh, researched is the use of intonation. Um, Toby, the, the system that has been developed uh, by Pierre Humbert in America, um, uses a, a sequence of high and low tones to describe intonation. And not much work has been done using that system to describe Malay, and that could be a very productive area of research. Uh, many other areas, uh, aspects of the phonetics of Malay would benefit from research. It's uh, um, not much has been done on it. We hope that this element will uh, give people some ideas from uh, um, to, to develop. So uh, it's just a starting point rather than completion. Okay, that's, that's all. Uh, I, that's short. If there's any questions, please uh, get back to me. Now I'm going to escape from that and I can see what we're doing here. Okay, um, so if you have any questions, um, let me know. I'll just um, stop the recording while we're asking questions. So people feel free to unmute and un unmask yourself. Yeah.